hi there and welcome along to another edition of What's the Word in association with Ladbrook. Slim down panel this week, Johnny Ward and David Jennings joining me uh, to preview what is, lads, this is an exciting weekend of racing, isn't it? At last, Johnny. Yeah, the back, doing the, came. back doing the spotlights today, doing uh, Navin on Sunday and um, just great to see these names back and Nays is possibly even better again. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Race. The rhinestone, the first, Bacardi's over fences yeah. as well as the feature race we're going to discuss. I think it's days like like Saturday and Sunday this week that we got into racing. As yeah. a 12 and 13 year old tagging along with your dad to the races. Yeah. It, was, it was weekends like this. I can't wait. Yeah, no, it's absolutely brilliant. Well, let, let's, let's start it nice then. Uh, the fishery hurdle uh, at 12.30. Again, it's one of those races where you see all those kind of triumph hurdle horses coming back out. Uh, and I think standing out for you in this. Uh, I, like obviously, uh, Farkla is not running, so it, it looks like Willie versus Esporta Len. I thought Saldier, who Johnny, I think, if Johnny was to rank his top five first in training, I think Saldier would be pretty close. You do like Won Saldier. him a right few quid in Punches Town. And uh, I think he's a very good horse, and I think he'll win this. I think he looks the stable first string. I think he's just a better horse. And he's, he's a kind of an imposing individual. I think he's quite good, so it'll be, it would be Saldier for me. And um, what about Espoir Dillon? Do you think he can develop this? You know, he really had one bad one last year. He did, yeah, and it was disappointing. He looked very good earlier on last year. Talked to Breen Kane who was at the, the mead launch at Fairy House during the weekend, and he thinks he's come alive uh, since last year, so it'll be interesting. But I think, I think Saldier has more scope for improvement. What do you reckon, Johnny? Are you sticking with Saldier? You, well, you fairly nailed your colours to his yeah. last earlier on. The year. We shouldn't, uh, if, uh, shouldn't forget Mr. Adjudicator as well. I don't think Ruby's ever ridden Saldier off the top of my head. It was either um, Paul Townend, Robbie Power rode him when he won at, at uh, Punchestown, and uh, when he ran at Fairy House, I don't think Ruby rode him then either. Um, I think a bigger field would suit him. He's a very classy horse, and uh, I was actually up at Willie's during the week, and he's very, very happy with him. And he says, like, this is basically a champion hurdle horse in the making, hopefully. Um, he didn't say champion hurdle winner, but that's his, his logical route. And uh, even though he's a four-year-old going on five, and he came off the flat, he's quite, f he's quite national hunt bred in some respects. He, does, he, doesn't even, uh, he has that make about him that he's going to become a proper two-mile hurdler, and uh, I'm very excited by him. Um, mm. I think he will take the beating. Nice starting step for him this weekend. Yeah, th this is a lovely race for four-year-olds. and It's kind of rare enough kind of a race, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. Jetski, I suppose, the one horse that won it that went on to bigger and better things. So. Such a good renewal. Exactly, um, okay. Espor Dallin, obviously, small question marks, uh, the way he finished his campaign, but I'd say he'll still run a huge race and he gets a couple of pounds as well. Um, but I, I, I think you should back Saldi if it's champion hurdle. I can't see what else he's going to run in. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, right, on to the uh, popular square chase as well, and this is really all about one horse, but it, isn't it great to see, just see them out running? Yeah, I would have been... St. Calvados is a type of horse that I would have been very interested in. If the ground was very soft in a good race, I think the way he's so exuberant and he goes so far clear, and I think he could catch fitness out on other horses. I don't think that'll happen in the footpad, but it will be a test for footpad. St. Calvados bizarrely started 11-4 to 4 in last year's Arca. Like, who would have thought against footpad against, you know, Petit Mouchoir, Petit Brain Mouchoir. Power, started 11 to 4 second favourite. It's, 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 it's hard to believe now, but he's a good horse. He's not as good as Footpad. Footpad hopefully will light up the, the national hunt season and uh, this will be the start of uh, hopefully great things. Is this a how far job, Johnny, or is it just, a, you know... Uh, probably, enjoying. you know, at the weights, he's six pounds in hand. That's not a huge amount for a horse coming back, but um, he was, again, just you were asking Willie about a few horses during the week. This horse was one that he's just very, very happy with. You know, a couple he was kind of maybe slightly humming and hawing, um, but no, he, a foot pad is in great shape. Uh, and do you get any idea of where next for him? Like, he obviously starts here over two miles, which is ideal to start over two miles. So you don't have to dip him too much, but do you think he steps up? He's talking about the King George. Like, it, it was interesting, the article that Jenna mentioned, where they went so quick in that, and he was actually, I've never seen him he yeah, was he, slightly he, caught flat full. Yeah, he paddled a bit. Like two and a half yeah. miles wouldn't be a problem. You'd love to see him in the King George, but like from from going here to the King George in the space of like six weeks and a, and a mile, it's asking a lot. I, I would think he'd probably keep more to two miles. We obviously don't have Duvan. Um, he does have Min, um, but I'm not sure. I, I think... I think he'll probably keep him to two miles for the time being, but it's going to be exciting to see him back. He should take all the beat. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, right, just looking around the UK, obviously November handicap upcoming at Doncaster at, at a quarter past three. Johnny, uh, you, you like one in this? I mean, it's bizarre the situation we have with the November handicap now. It's so kind of irrelevant in the schedule of champion training and champion jockey and stuff like that. But Yeah, um, it, it, obviously it is, what, the penultimate race of the season. Um, but it, look, it looks a very good renewal. Um, I like Rashoon that Ian Williams has for Jim Crowley. When he was three-year-old, he won over the course and trip from 
um, from rear, just travelled really well. And for a horse by Shammerdale, the last day he won over a mile and six on heavy ground. Like, I, I, I was surprised at that, how well he coped with it. The rain will definitely help him. His draw isn't great, but, like, if you go through the last sort of ten winners of this race, a lot of them were drawn high. He travels really well. He still has, um, he only got four pounds for winning the last, which I thought was, was uh, quite lenient. Jim, Jim Crowley's definitely sweet in his chance as well, and... I, I, at double figures, I think he'll run a big, big race. Hopefully, the race is run to suit. You like one of the November handicaps all? I do. It's the obvious one, but I think he's he's the most likely winner. Royal Line still unexposed. He's up to 105. The way he won at Epsom, like it's hard to believe. He won at Epsom when we were in Punchestown for the Punchestown Festival. It hasn't ran since. He's gone up 10 pound for that, but obviously the ground was too quick all summer. He 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 started favour for the race last year. Um, he's 10 pound higher now, but he traded at 1.8 and running in the race last year. Looked all over and was just a bit of a big baby. Just didn't really have the uh, didn't really know how to win the race ended up finishing seventh wasn't beaten far I'd imagine all year John Gosling this has been the plan I think he's potentially a group two horse and uh, yeah I, I'd be surprised now if he wasn't bang there he's classic a, John Gosling group horse in the yeah, handicap scenario yeah I think so yeah uh, on to Wincanton as well we've all got the elite hurdle and the uh, badger ales in there Johnny you like one in the elite hurdle yeah we have a dream he's another horse who's stepping out of juvenile hurdle like Saldier um, but again he's by Martelline he shouldn't have any problem stepping into senior hurdle and he's not one of these flashy flatbread horses and he's waved of running as a juvenile obviously we didn't see him at Cheltenham but he would have been very interesting he was due to return at Cheltenham and um, was scratched from that race DJ fancied Radishan hugely Radishan clearly needed the run I mean you couldn't give him away I mean he, he drifted yeah. from odds on out to like 7-2 to two or he actually stayed on quite well in the he end, ran a grand he? race like you know the, yeah. the, the mayor of John McConnell's who won the race might have been slightly underestimated by everyone except those who backed it from 20s into 5s or whatever but Radishan at the weights he, sh he shaped okay but in any event We Have a Dream was probably ready enough for that I think he'll be ready here I think he's He's going to be a horse who's going to make into a very, very good two-mile hurdler and chase her down the line, I think. And uh, I think he can give Verdana Blue a beat in here. Yeah, uh, Verdana Blue just, just notably drifted as well in the last couple of days uh, in that uh, market. The Badger Ales, sort of one of those real classic on a West Country yeah, races. Yeah, and the horse I'm very interested in here. And, and there's plenty of rain forecast for Wincanton, which I'm delighted about. I'm all over Ramses de Tele from the David Pipe Sable. Uh, Pipe obviously didn't have a good season last season, but Jack B. Quick and Aldrin won in the last week for him. This horse has had a wind up, and he's one of them horses that I thought was screaming for a wind up. Uh, just wasn't finishing out his race towards the end of last season. He was rated 145 when he finished uh, seventh in the Ultima. Was bang there turning in on ground that was probably a little bit quicker than he, than he wanted. He's four pound lower than that now. And last season, he, he beat... Uh, Ron Stream by seven lengths at Chepstow, giving him thirteen pounds. Beat him seven lengths. Ron Stream is now rated one hundred and thirty nine. So that suggests to me that Ramses Tatelli is seriously well handicapped of one four one. Had the wind up. Looks like he's been laid out for the race. The rain is coming. I think he's he's only a six year old, so there should be more to come. There was two, fourteen to one available earlier on in the week. If the rain does come, he's going to go off so much shorter. I, I like this horse. He's a grey. He'll be easy to spot. And I think he'll be fine there. Uh, elsewhere in that Wincanton card as well, that uh, great two novices chase before under 225. You, you like one in that as yeah, well? Yeah, I don't like the two favourites. I really don't. I think they're worth taking on. Um, Secret Invest and Bags Groove. And Bags Groove, yeah. And the one I like, who I think has improved the site for going over fences, Majestic Mall. Uh, Emma Lavelle won this in 2015 with Junction 15. Court Emotion was third in 2012. It's a race she likes to target. Um, Majestic Mall wasn't as good as the other two over hurdles, but she, she put a 131 rated hurdler in Kalahari Queen in, in his place, I thought, at Worcester. Despite jumping out to her right all the time, I think going back right-handed is going to be a huge help to Majestic Mall. There doesn't look to be that much pace in the race. She, should, she could get a freebie out in front. And I think she could be underestimated because of her hurdle mark, but she's a fine big mare that I think will do well over fences. And... Uh, yeah, I think, I think Majestic Mall is worth taking on. I think it's worth taking on the front two with Majestic Mall. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, elsewhere around the grounds, it's a sort of busy Saturday, as always. You like going at Aintree as well in, in the 240? Uh, I do, yeah. I think this is a real interesting race. Hell's Kitchen could be a grade one horse for all we know. He could be spectacular, but we just don't know. He's a bit of an enigma. He was pulled up um, last time. Uh, War Sound is the one I like for Philip Hobbs. Philip Hobbs has had six winners in the last three days. It's rated 136. It bumped into Brain Power, Rather Be, St. Calvados and Mr. Whitaker last year. Aside from that, though. <laughs> Aside from that, yeah. It, it didn't have many options, really, last season. I thought it ran well so, on so many occasions. I think it needs a fast pace and a, on a flat track like Aintree where it can creep into contention. It's 144 over hurdles and he's 136 over fences even though he jumps well. Um, he's 9-1 to with Labrooks. I think that's a fair price. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, elsewhere on Saturday, now, of course, the uh, uh, Brown Lad Handicap Hurdles sponsored by Sky Sports Racing. But... Uh, 
Johnny, you like one in this? Yeah, Brex Drago has been um, a real consistent improver for Gavin Cromwell. He was a major eye catcher in his first handicap start at Kilbegan. Um, maybe he found a bit too much in the flat last time, running a very hot race. Um, but he's just a horse. He, he's hard enough to handicap because he keeps finding a bit for pressure. I think this yeah. track will suit him. And for, for whatever, 50 grand race, I didn't think it was actually overly competitive. I think he's a fair each way chance. Yeah, a lot of these, he definitely have a fitness edge over a lot mm. of their higher rated. Gavin's had a, has a good time, but Breen Kane claiming as well. And uh, he's a horse will find plenty. Good stuff. Well, on to the Sunday action from Navin, obviously, for Trier Hurdle Day there uh, at Navin. Looking forward to that. May as well you, look, at, you, oh, look at this. Oh, you can... This is your yes. favourite day of the year. It's at Navin, it's jumping. I've been told not to say it's going to be cold, but it'll probably be cold. It'll be cold. <laughs> Coldest place in the world, but yeah. uh, it's still one you of the most it. enjoyable Lovely. songs. It is yeah. so yeah. cold. Like, there's yeah. people who like Christmas, like, but Navin on Sundays, my God. Uh, this is great stuff, really, like Apple's Jade, um, you know, great novice hurdle between uh, Quick Grab and Felix De Jay, but um, so much to look forward to. Like, Foot Pad won on this card last year, so did Apple's Jade. It's, it's a cracker. It really is, like, it's... It gets me quite excited. Get, gets you excited, really. It uh, gets you jiggy, as, uh, as Chatwood would say. Well, let's start with the Vitria, then. Tote Vitria Chase at uh, 10 past two. Uh, just the five got a post here, but uh, yeah. anything for you? In all my excitement, this is probably the, the race I'm most <laughs> yeah. disappointed with. We were hoping we might get footpad. St. Calvados, our great field, and we've got none of them. I think Bally O'Sheen, this is his Gold Cup. This really is, because you know he wants better ground. He's been running all summer. He's fit. He's rated 157, so he's the highest rated in the race. He just simply has to win this because he's won at Navin already. He liked the ground. He's been trained for the race. I think he'll win. I think he'll beat Dr. Phoenix. And that, that fitness edge you probably have, uh, have over him too. But bang in form. But in fairness, at that, at that launch, one of the very few horses that were mentioned uh, was, uh, was Balioshin by Barry Garrity. So mm. uh, he's, he's positive about that. He's, he's booked to ride. Johnny, what do you like in this? I like Balioshin, yeah. Um, Ordinary World is interesting because he ran at Gore in the last year behind... Uh, Jessica Harrington's horse, who was second at Down Royal. Um, Woodland Opera. Woodland Opera, and he clearly didn't get two and a half. They gave it an experiment. Um, he's, I think he's a terrible win record, actually, over fences, but he, he actually has probably a bigger chance than implied. But Bally Oshin's been brilliant this year, and yeah. I, I think it shouldn't be underestimated going back over hurdles last year. Albeit off a lower mark, he still had to beat Channing, who was definitely well handicapped. He did it very well, and uh, he's just been in great, great shape. I think, uh, exactly as Geno says, it is his cup final, and I think... Dr. Phoenix is 10 rising 11. He may need to run a little bit. He should have enough to beat him. Uh, the other thing about, about Balyoshin is one of the backhand comments. Even though he's a horse that has fallen a lot, he's actually a really exuberant jumper, oh, yeah. isn't he? We'd so find a big horse like. Uh, he could put these to work mm. early, couldn't he? All right, the uh, Liz Mullen hurdle then at 135. Prior to that, another superstar name here, Apples Jade, her start. And all that talk about jumps training and giving out about the ground, um, Gordon was actually quite positive about, about Apples Jade. Yeah, and even when I did a stable tour and even talking to him since, he's the one kind of star that he's, he's, he's thrilled with. You know, he's happy with all of them. But Apples Jade, who had been coming in season at Punchestown at uh, Cheltenham, just kept coming in season. And they've sorted that problem. They, they've rectified it. And apparently her work has been terrific. So she's one of these favourites that it looks a real competitive race. And you're kind of saying, oh, maybe she might need the run. But she won the race last year. And she's won that probably one of these favourites that could, could be a bigger price than she should. And, uh, yeah, I, I think she'll win. Yeah. Johnny, can you look past Apple's Jade in this? Um, you probably can. Like, I, I wasn't... I did, I did spotlight this race. I've tipped her, but I'm not mad confident. Her form over Jura's girl, with the benefit of hindsight, isn't, isn't all that strong. Certainly yeah. not strong enough to win this, I would have thought, um, on paper. Because Identity Thief... Like, if he performs like he did at Aintree, you know, he has a chance. You know, he does give weight away, but two and a half miles might be ideal around here. Dartman Park is still an interesting horse, you know. And Apple J, the three horses that I really am most interested in the race are all owned by Jigginstown. So the bet will be interesting. But Dartman Park, he's still, he's still quite an interesting horse. For, you forget he won a grade one at Punchestown because... Yeah. He, was he is going to be kept over hurdles this year. Yeah, I thought he might go chasing, but in any event, um, he was obviously disappointed at Cheltenham, but... Sh I was I was kind of encouraged that Jenna got a good vibe about Apple Jade because um, I was a bit disappointed in her at the end of last season. I thought Cheltenham, she just wasn't herself. But I thought at Punchestown, it was hard to forgive her two runs in a row. But at the same time, um, she's been an admirable mayor. Should have just about enough for these. And they did say they had given her a little veterinary procedure mm. to hope would yeah. deal with her coming into season a little bit. So, you know, perhaps that maybe a little 
of comfort for punters on that mm. front, perhaps. Mm. Uh, the novice hurdle as well at 105 is pretty decent here. Maybe looks a bit of a match on paper. Quick Grab and Felix Deji. Probably the race I'm most looking forward to on Sunday. Uh, Quick Grab is has been spectacular, I thought, at both at Listowel and Tipperary. Felix Deje has got so much natural pace, and I love the way he settled that Galway. Getting seven pound from Quick Grab, I honestly, like you know me, I love tipping something in a race, but I actually can't split them. I, I really don't know. I, I'd probably be, be, be more surprised if Felix Deje beat Quick Grab and then the other way around, but I wouldn't be shocked. Okay, Johnny, is it a match, and which, oh, which of the two would you put up? I, I, I thought Felix Deji was very good at Galway for the simple reason that he actually settled and he looked like more of a man of a horse. And um, he, like, he was well, well fancy for the champion bumper last year, but he gave himself absolutely no chance. And considering how keen he was, he actually ran well. I asked Keith Dunahoo at a preview night. Keith Dunahoo, by the way, if, if people are watching this, trying to think of people to get for preview nights, Keith Dunahoo is probably the best panellist, apart from you, Johnny, that I've seen. And, giving him away now. and <laughs> he said that last year I asked him, is there any young horse that could be the next Sam Crow, you know, that could mm. be the vet. And he goes, I'm telling you now, he says, Felix Deje is the one, he said. So that tells you all you need to know. That, yeah. And the fact that he's getting weight, and Quick Rabin can be quite keen himself. He was keen at La Soul. He was a bit better um, at Tipperary. I thought he was very good at Tipperary. The race kind of, apart from a little bit of traffic coming into straight, the race went perfect for him. Mm. Um, but given seven pounds to this big, powerful horse, who's very exciting, um, if a lot of it, a lot of it will be which of them settles better because if Felix says he goes back to his bumper traits, he might make it hard for himself. But he should go off favour getting seven pounds. You know, he's he's an exciting horse, this fella. Um, and as I, I was actually said to Teddy O'Leary at, after Galway, I said this, you know, it just looks like Hurdon kind of will make him. He said, yeah, that that was the whole thing. Just it might make a man out from just jumping something. Well, Tom, now for best bets of the weekend, of course, Labrador's going best odds guaranteed on those multiples in store from uh, 11 to 1 every day. Right, best bet of the weekend and a multiple for us. Johnny, start with you. I go with Reshoon as the best bet in the, uh, the, the penultimate race of the flat season uh, for Jim Crowley. Um, give it the next best as Felix Deji. He really should win getting the weight. Um, my third selection, uh, let's go to Nace and we'll have a little bit each way on Brex Drago in the handicap hurdle. Good stuff. Jenna? Uh, I'm going for Ramses to Tele in the 335 at Wincanton. Sticking at Wincanta, Majestic Mall in the 225 and at Aintree in the 240, War Sound. Good stuff. Well, I'm going for a Saldier at Nice in the uh, Fishery Lane. Valiushin to win at uh, Navin on Sunday in the 210. And Labrisa Breeze to come back to form at Doncaster at 205 on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week. Of course, Morgiana Hurdle and, of course, the November meeting from Cheltenham Morgiana. As well. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Also known as the Morgiana. Yeah. There we are. <laughs>